webinar of the FN of the Green Municipal Fund. Every month we present a different program. Today we will uh, examine how to get a project started, tips for small francophone communities. I'm Emma Kurt. I'm with Jillian Young and Jesse Granger, and we are all three of the team of, re of this uh, program. Emily Lowe, the project, is also joining us today. We will start this meeting. By, this will be, be held on the indigenous land for for numerous years, uh, and they were custodians of this land called Canada. Today, we recognize Anishinaabe Algonquin as the custodians of the territory on which the offices are located of the FCM and, uh, and where they used to meet. Uh, and we appreciate uh, their link to this territory. We also recognize the contribution of the Métis, Inuit, uh, and all of the First Nations that uh, reinforce the community of this land in particular and our country as a whole. So where, wherever you are, please join me to, uh, to acknowledge uh, this uh, fact and to uh, think and act in a way that leads to reconciliation wherever you may live. We encourage you to be, to, to um, please uh, add your comments in the uh, chat function as uh, we go along. And before he starting, I'd like to um, acknowledge that this webinar will be mostly in French with the simultaneous interpretation in English. In the lower right of your screen, it's the link little globe and select the English option. And as we will continue in the presentation, please ask your question in the chat box. Uh, we will answer these questions throughout the, uh, the hour and there will be a Q&A at the end. Also, you can ask the questions through the uh, chat during the presentation in the language of your choice. We will see, we will take a look at these questions that could be answered during the presentations before moving on to the Q&A after. This is our agenda for today. We will have two presentations from and followed by a Q&A at the end, towards the end of the session, there will be a short presentation of Emilie Marleau in charge of our programs to, the fund, to explain the funding method. And for an introduction, the FCM is the national voice of Canada's local order of government. It represents more than 2,000 municipalities uh, throughout the 10 provinces and the three territories. The uh, fund helps uh, supports uh, municipal sustainable projects across Canada through funding, resources, and training. Our, and the, our training gives these municipalities all the tools that they need to reinforce their resilience and to improve the quality of life of Canadians. And this is a program of $1.6 billion funded by the government of Canada. Today, we will concentrate how to launch a project with specific examples for small francophone communities. So without further ado, I'd like to start the presentation. First of all, I'd like to give the microphone to Clément Mousset Sustainable Development Coordinator, Association of Francophone Municipalities of New Brunswick. So, uh, Clément will take over from now, from now on. Thank you, Emma. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes, we do. Can you also see my screen? Yes, we do. That's great. So, thank you for the invitation, and thank you for the. Uh, for the FCM and for the Green Fund to share this program. This is the pilot project in renewable energy 
and the energetic efficiency, it's a mouthful. It's the use of biomass uh, within our municipalities. I'll delve deeper into this uh, later on. A short introduction of the association, Association Francophone des Municipalités du Nouveau-Brunswick. So this is an association that's uh, located in New Brunswick that helps Francophone and bilingual municipalities who are part of the association to realize several projects as far as the uh, services and also we've got several files that we work on we're working with 31 municipalities that are a member the, the in the after the uh, the new local governments and it corresponds to 390,000 citizens throughout the province it was the association was fun, was uh, uh, saw the day in 1989, and the headquarters is Belbi, which used to be called Fatsi Rashi at the time. So we will work on several fronts, uh, several files. So, so to support the, the local governments to contribute to the outreach of the Francophony and to promote the communities. And this is what we're going to allude to, to today. And with several files, whether the management of the uh, what the assets and the climate change, participation of women also in the uh, municipal work and also heritage work and all the files that we work from one year to the next. Uh, so more specifically, what we're going to talk about today the theme of this webinar is uh, where comes the idea to realize a project of biomass uh, in within these municipalities since 2013 we've been working with our member municipalities we accompany them to launch projects uh, of uh, mitigation of uh, greenhouse gases uh, whether with the corporate world but within the municipalities and their infrastructure we work with the Federation of Municipalities to launch a project to to combat climate change, I, 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 the, the, to, to have an inventory of the greenhouse grasses and to, to have targets of reduction and action plans to mitigate the effects of climate change within these municipalities. In numbers, we've got approximately 39 municipalities that participated to this project before the governance reform. And we've got a project that's launched this year and we're working with six new municipalities to, to go ahead with this. Uh, this uh, led us to the first realization was that the buildings represent more than 33% of the greenhouse gases emissions in the municipal admin. The totality of the buildings use oil, propane, or electricity as sources of energy. And also, as far as the conversion to clean energy, it is an important potential of reduction of greenhouse gases and, and energy consumption. So after realizing this, what we wanted to do was to bring the, pro the biomass project to set to the implementation. So a new heating system that would reduce the green, greenhouse gases within these, uh, these uh, municipal buildings. So we wanted to realize some efficiencies in the buildings, how we can reduce the consumption and also to use the residual biomass as renewable energy. We are in a province where we can find this uh, matter. It's even great, greater if we can use it locally and recycle it and to have a uh, sustainable cycle this way. And the last point is to contribute to the local market of a renewable source. The where we find where we have a waste uh, that is brought to the municipalities from the surroundings and also how to how we work with municipalities 
to Bray to set forth this program. We're talking biomass, but there are all kinds of projects we were working on and how we present this to municipalities. The uh, most of the municipalities that participate, we work with munis rural small municipalities. They have limited capacities and resources. Most of these municipalities have financial and human resources that are somewhat limited. We work uh, with municipalities. The uh, population uh, was uh, less than 300 to up to 71,000 to the greatest centers. We're talking about an average of 5,800 uh, citizens. Uh, and after the reform, the governance model, there there was uh, an average of about 12,000 in the municipalities I'm alluding to. This is a project that started before the reform, municipalities of about 2,500 citizens. What do we do with the Francophone Association? We, we serve our members. The role of the association is to support the municipalities, to bring ideas or projects, to realize them. So it's a writing up with the Canadian Federation of Municipalities as a fund provider, the submission of these uh, demands, and also after doing this work, supervise the project to establish links between the consultants, the engineers, and the corporations, different partners, and the municipalities. So the management of the funds and the admin also of these projects. So this is the keys to uh, to to hand the keys uh, and to have the reports and the follow-ups, uh, everything that's involved. So we were supported. We were the underpinnings of the project as far as the demand of in the call for interest uh, for each project uh, with the, for the service to members. There's a call for interest to to explain what the, is the type of the project, the benefits for the community, and what type of funding can help you to reach these goals and to reduce the cost as much as possible to help them to get from A to Z with these projects. Uh, now I'll go more into detail with the biomass project uh, as far as the implementation. The first phase was to prepare and realize a feasibility study we wanted to make sure that it would be uh, would be something that would be uh, feasible and that would pay for itself uh, this was done in january uh, 2017 up to june of the following year 11 municipalities uh, participated 21 buildings that were studied for this uh, in the scope of the project so so the association was was uh, the lead uh, uh, at the and all one technical consultant for for also for the uh, to study the feasibility and also an economic analysis and all the equipment necessary for the funding. He also there was the the for the was the the program of the of uh, innovation in climate uh, in climate matters and 80 percent was uh, paid by fcm and 20 percent uh, by the municipalities so the pilot project uh, which was the largest phase of the goal was to implement the modal uh, that was uh, that was established uh, and to follow the estimates to be within budget this was done from 2018 September to spring 2022. And the first year was to obtain obtain the funding for the project, the second year to realize the admin work, and the third year to realize the work per se, uh, purchase of equipment, implementation, collaboration with the engineering firm. And it was to analyze the performance environmental-wise and the costs involved after the installation once the installation was a done deal we assessed the uh, performance over a year so the project was done four of our municipalities four buildings that were converted to biomass uh, and once again this was like the study was supervised by the association 
with one technical consultant and one consultant in economic matters. Uh, we 80 percent with the FCM, with the funding, with the green fund, and 20 percent that, that was contributed by the municipalities. Now, if we look at the uh, numbers and the results, uh, excuse me, as far as the consumption, we have we had a surprise regarding the study with the implementation of this type of equipment. We had more consumption. See the reference. Uh, this was measured at the time of study, and the one that measured after the installation one year after. So it gave more consumption of energy. It doesn't mean that there were more uh, emissions of greenhouse gases. In spite of this uh, increase, there was a reduction of G G H uh, GHGs uh, that was uh, substantial compared to a reduction of 42% of emissions. So it shows the efficiency of biomass. Also, as far as the costs involved, we had a decrease of 17 percent in it. Uh, it was the equivalent of two, almost $13,000 for the four municipalities for only one year. So this is an appreciable cost, especially for the municipalities who want to invest in something else who had other projects and we're talk about unitary costs uh, just to give you an idea of the effect of the biomass uh, in compared to other energies that biomass uh, costs uh, half what other uh, of oil propane or electricity so it is uh, very uh, in spite of a higher consumption there was a reduction in costs which is absolutely incredible for all municipalities and as far and the payback period or cost recovery, which is under the column, the PRI, taking into account of the years 2021, 2022, the cost recovery varies between two, 2.6 and 9.2 years. So what we'll try to adjust is it takes into account the increase of consumption of these buildings observed uh, that we saw earlier in the chart. So we, it's a win-win situation. So uh, we uh, seven to eight years to uh, get the total cost recovery, and we took the city Riviera Verde which uh, has been amalgamated to another municipality. But we wanted to see was uh, in terms of the energy consumed, the uh, before putting, before installing the biomass and then afterwards, and we see that the municipality used the biomass heating much more than the other energies, uh, which was propane, and the electric uh, consumption. So they use 78% of the biomass heating. And this, uh, if I'm going back to the chart, the previous chart, as far as uh, Riviera Verde is concerned, a reduction of GHGs of uh, 88%, which is absolutely incredible jaw dropping. So 88% of reduction of GHGs that is non-negligible for that building. And as far as the challenges that we encountered, there were challenges as far as the cost of purchase for small and for small buildings. It was difficult to find local, local uh, entrepreneurs who were ready to undertake this work because it's not common this is something that uh, this uh, not mass uh, produced and as far as the uh, as far as the capital investments uh, we've got the uh, a lot of uh, companies were not familiar and to remediate we could do something better if there were more companies that were familiar with the system as far as the regulation in new brunswick is concerned we 
it requires a certification SME that is at the detriment of small uh, organizations, which was a challenge. Uh, and as far as specialized uh, manpower of the realization of this project, we had several stumbling blocks uh, on the way to realization because of the lack and also the technical aspect of the installation. After, after, after the with the municipalities to to operate to have the to have the uh, some put someone in charge in the municipality to operate the maintenance of the equipment uh, and also to make sure that the uh, it works full 24 or 7 in the winter so there were challenges to uh, get this going and also with the winter we had a colder winter in February that sort of disrupted the uh, procurement of the biomass uh, that crimped the use of one of the uh, one of the equipments. But we will make sure that uh, this is not the case in the future. And uh, I believe that's uh, it. Uh, if you have. Uh, you can send me an email or phone me if you have any questions of this project. And if uh, and this type of project, if you have an association in your province uh, that can uh, lead this type of project uh, and you'd like to uh, go deeper into this, we'd be happy to cater to your needs and to answer your questions. and. I will answer whatever questions you may have at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Clément. Great. At this point, uh, Karine will take over. The, from Candiac, she is the director of the, uh, of the transition and innovation. If you would like to share your screen, all right, uh, now we have the right one. You have you see the right presentation. Great, we got it. Finally, now this is another project that we are in a study of feasibility of the, we're trying to be an energy loop in the city of Kantiak. This is a project that took place in 2020, 2022. I will present the city of Kaziak, why the rationale and also the stakes and that there is explain the results. Uh, so I'll go through this quickly. First, those who don't know Kaziak, we're on the south shore of Montreal, 23,000 23, citizens, uh, but this will grow uh, substantially within the next few years. You see, this is the where the study at the blue circle. So there's a new center town. This is a new. This is an industrial area where part where some of the industries are no longer in operation. And we're trying to transform this. There will be a lot of action in that sector over the next few years. New constructions, uh, larger density, building. Uh, businesses of uh, proximity. We have to redo the refurbishment of the uh, Mokan Boulevard. The And also City Hall will be rebuilt and also municipal garages. So a uh, lot, tons of action. So we were wondering energy wise, uh, this is a great opportunity perhaps to, to, to put into value the thermal discharges, water vapor, uh, weight, and uh, perhaps uh, we could uh, we could heat the, the, this waste of future buildings in in proximity to the uh, these uh, these waste heat releases. So we starting uh, documenting uh, studying energy loops. There's no uh, no one specialized in the city. We call left, right, and center, and we wanted to valorize the thermal discharges so it uh, diminishes our needs and energy and uh, e ecologically it's uh, it could reduce the costs uh, of of heating for and we were 
if it, could we sell this en surplus energy so we were involved in this and for this we'd have to realize a study of uh, feasibility and we did have we did not know exactly where the buildings will be uh, situated we were all in speculation mode so we were potential feasibility would it be interesting what would be the different challenges so we sought funding for this at the time i don't know if today there is but at the time there was only fc fcm that uh, that uh, provided funds for a feasibility study there was a lot of the uh, funds for the energy liberalization, but not to see their relevance, to see if it was a, it was uh, proper for, and uh, so there was a demand that was made with FCM. It was to the feasibility to recoup the waste heat releases, we're talking about the water vapor, as far as thermal discharges to cater to the future needs of the municipal buildings and uh, to replace the the uh, the industrial buildings it was really estimates we did not know quantify what these releases would be find the best technologies that could be used and uh, the uh, the it was to qualify the providers and the beneficiaries, if there was, uh, if we could match them, what techniques, the, the brainstorming, what would be the ideal scenarios? So there were two scenarios that were held that we made some recommendations. So before the study, this, uh, this there were a lot of tons of questions that uh, ar arose from this. Uh, this may be usual for people in the private, but for a municipality, this was the first time that uh, we were we asked these type of questions. At the time, there was no information available whatsoever. The energy loops were made in the private uh, sector. There was not much information available. And uh, it's delicate. There were a lot of people who said they were experts and wanted to develop an expertise. But according to what we understood, there weren't really any experts in the province. There were a few loops, but not a great number of them. So we wondered if the confidential data would the private uh, companies would be ready to share with us. But the main thing that we had to deal with was the, was the timeline to ask for funding for a, for the feasibility. So you need the funding to realize the work afterwards. There was a delay of two years in Quebec and we had to synchronize everything with the, uh, with the real estate and property debt, what we asked from the, uh, from the, uh, the people tasked with the to establish these buildings. So we made this analysis. So I'm going to show you a synopsis of the results. Uh, you'll see that it brought us uh, somewhere else completely. So there was a huge detour to bring to a very simple solution that you're probably aware of. We identified three industries for this. They accepted that we take a look uh, he, what did the period, how much heat they emitted, uh, what their sus suspension uh, substances in the uh, in these uh, thermal discharges. None of them uh, qualified. It was more easier to, to identify the list that those that could uh, benefit from this. It was much more simple for those who could build. So we will concentrate on our buildings uh, uh, several scenarios, aerothermic uh, energy loops, and finally, and uh, the uh, the waste heat releases were in low temperature, so it didn't leave much room for other scenarios. It was not relevant to compare one scenario that was not interesting compared to, so we went to geothermical in an energy loop, uh, 
so also a SWOT analysis and the uh, also the type of analysis that was uh, shown earlier. So the scenario one, the energy loop at low temperature, uh, I learned a lot. Uh, so, so I was ignorant in the matter at the beginning, but the waste heat the realizes it is a, a they are emitted at 40 45 degrees they have to be interesting without thermal pumps you have to be above 50 degrees celsius so this were low temperatures this was fairly good news because they were recuperating a lot of the heat internally and uh, i was the numbers that we show here in the chart these are uh, gross numbers we did not know the dimensions of the building it's hard to qualify quantify the energy consumption this is an order of size so you have to be uh, it, it does not consider all the energy measures that could be undertaken so i see this as a worst case scenario it gave us a, a, a in order why is the price because the distance between the emitter and the beneficiary those were not buildings that were side by side a lot of question of the governance of the energy loop if it was going to go smoothly how do we manage this with an industry if they leave if there's a shutdown if the industry shuttered so this is not very, This so we had to study all these scenarios. We went with the geothermic, I know this, we have to know, we looked at uh, several scenarios of energy loops and there were not any that we could compare it to. And geothermic was not in the scope of the city. So we went, we explored elsewhere when it's known that, it, as in Kondiak, this was not something that had ever been considered. So we had not foreseen using this. So we started to look at the system elsewhere. We took the energy loop closed and we know that uh, that uh, permanent or open columns, but we took the worst possible scenario to make sure to overestimate the advantages, the benefits. Uh, so the cost recovery of 21 years would most surely be lower than that. There was no accumulators. We did not any combinations of, uh, e there's a G there's energy loop uh, with a closed loop. So that's uh, what we went to. So this was a real success because uh, the feasibility study and we reached a, a conclusion that gave us a direction and we're applying it uh, at the, the present time, there's the Régie des Incendies, the, as far as the, uh, we're doing tests on the, of the organization of, uh, uh, we'll know how many wells will be necessary. We'll be able to calculate the costs and all the advantages and also the positive fallout. We, w we went elsewhere and we have a conclusion and uh, this this is this was the success of the analysis we were open to all and the consultants and everyone participated in the in the brainstorming geo thermal energy is not well known and we were able to document the feasibility so these are factors of success uh, there were a lot of people involved hydro quebec uh, Quebec uh, transition energy and the excellent uh, collaboration of industry. We did not expect such a huge buy-in by the industry, so we cannot uh, communicate the final study because this is confidential. So we undertook not to divulge their data, but we had great collaboration. And some of them told us, uh, I want to I want to, I, I want to buy into this. So this uh, snowballed the project. So I had a great collaboration. Transition Energy Quebec, Hydro Quebec. They supported us. People were motivated. They were all gung ho. It was surprising. So the to value to put value on the waste heat releases. Uh, there were a lot. 
so many people involved and the, uh, we followed this, the city council, and they were encouraged by the fallout of the project. Uh, so in conclusion, this is a study that uh, allowed us to examine the best uh, energy solutions adopted to the city. It mobilized all the uh, all the parties. We talk about this on a daily basis, so it's, it's part of our daily lingo. You've got the steps uh, that cost uh, 100 and... Uh, the also the uh, 55,000 from FCM without the subsidy, we couldn't have done this project. I don't think we'd have, this is the beauty of this project. It's brought us somewhere we never expected to land. So that's all. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Karin. A very inspirational, a great story now. We will move to the Q and A. I will share. I will share my screen. I do have a question to to get us going. I'd like to. One question. I'd like to encourage the people to add questions in the chat box, and we're going to try to answer as many as possible. If you can give me just a sec to look at the first question in the chat box. The first one, according to you, I'd like to start with Clima to give uh, Karin the time to get her get her breath back. Uh, what is the strategic uh, planning that allowed you to have so much success with your with your endeavor? A very great question. As I was saying earlier, we. We there were calls for interest with the municipalities to propose to to set forth these projects and to explain to facilitate their participation and of this type of environment to project and to apply it to other sectors as far as the strategy is to is to not promotion per se but to see the municipalities what are your needs what would you and what uh, what would be and to propose to make the pitch and would you like are there other projects that you'd like to tackle so this is service to members it's the need and to satisfy their needs uh, where where they they're not uh, that are not necessarily uh, that they don't prioritize before our intervention Thank you, Karin. He was a link to our inventory. Well, I, as Clema said, the buildings, there were a lot, a lot of GHGs, uh, especially in an industrial area like this. So when you build something new to be, have this uh, first and foremost in your mind and to foresee uh, the, the fewest emissions lined up with the goals of the city of the city council. Uh, also, I had a question directly for Clima. With in your presentation, could you explain why the consumption of energy of the buildings why it increased so much? That that was a little surprising. Clima uh, speaking now. Uh, I think we added some equipment uh, that uh, was to replace uh, uh, so a municipality that heated with oil or electricity. So there were added equipment. So it reduces uh, the other equipment. Uh, so you, instead of eliminate uh, uh, 
uh, oil that will be uh, eliminated. So it added consumption in the meantime, other factors during the year. Was it a more rigorous winter, a colder winter that required more heating? I'd have to examine the uh, data as far as the uh, median temperature. I don't have the answer uh, quickly, but this is something that I could de that I could explore more in depth why there was such a surge in consumption that year. Thank you. Emily, I believe uh, this uh, may be a question for Klima. Is there uh, an association similar to yours that exists in Ontario? Anything as far as the francophone municipalities, if I get the gist of the question well? That's a good question, says Klima. I know in Quebec, there are several associations with the, uh, the Quebec Federation of Municipalities. In Ontario, I can't really say. I don't, I don't have a clue, to be very honest. I see also in the chat, uh, FMO in Ontario. So I can I imagine that uh, this is something similar to your organization. And uh, once again, if you want to add your question in the chat, that would be great. Quickly. So on my side, the, did you did you have? Now, did, did, did you hear from other municipalities that were interested in launching projects? Uh, so what would be the first thing if they undertook a project as ambitious as yours? Klima, uh, Karin, did you want to see it's the Karin says it's to do what we did, the feasibility study. That's the that was the uh, the underpinnings of the whole thing. So we, we've got information as of, is to start by the building blocks, which is the feasibility study. So we, Klima says we look at what's being elsewhere, the initiatives, where the, what, what are the goals of the province? We try to align ourselves and we try to get ideas. It's easier to get the funding and to see what the needs are in the municipalities so so we have to explore what's done federally and uh, provincially and to see if we can uh, uh, transcribe this into the community reality and as Karin was saying to feasibility study is uh, before launching a pilot project for the feasibility study I was wondering, he, for the, do you have uh, do, do do you have help to provide to them in uh, projects as ambitious as that one? Do you have something, Karin? We could start by you. Well, I uh, I work the phones, I work the lines very much, and uh, uh, the uh, transition uh, Quebec. Uh, energetic to transition. I, I thought their help was incredible. And uh, and with Hydro-Quebec, I tried to find neutral people that would give me, and this uh, made a lot of inroads. Uh, I spoke with people in other municipalities that uh, it's by working the lines that you develop the contacts and people were generally quite generous. They took the time to answer the questions the contacts were done this way, and you have to dive in after, and uh, you, you and uh, we, uh, there were surprises all along the way, but that's okay, you have to expect this. Uh, Clément, now, uh, we try to create collaborations with the environmental experts, uh, Atlantic Canada, New Brunswick, it 
can be by organizing events or showing up with our annual congress to have experts that create links networking to learn about the partnerships that are that are possible it gives you ideas it uh, it gives you also inspiration as far as the data what's possible what's in the realm of the possibility and not within the uh, province thank you at this point i'd like to give the mic to emily marlow she's the counselor with uh, our program uh, with our program realization so i'll invite emily to take over hello everyone i see a few names that are familiar that's great uh, for those that i haven't met uh, my name is emily marlow i'm counselor of outreach for the fcm green the green fund so to to have our programs be known and also to accompany you. We can start from an ID. I, we, we can speak and just let us know what you're thinking about. And we move towards something more concrete, towards a real uh, ID of a subsidy, something that uh, this is not uh, formal the next few minutes, but I find it with visual support. It's always easier. So I share my screen. Not easy for me to master this uh, this uh, Zoom platform. All right. Uh, got it. Uh, so for those who don't know the Green Fund, this is the, the greatest program of the FCM. The 1.6 billion, or close to 2 billion soon. So this is an ongoing and evergreen. So the vast majority, there's no, there's no deadline that you have to meet. There's no short delay to submit your your ideas. What's press? What's particular is that we're at a, uh, a, the, a time that is of the utmost importance, what you see, the offers of funding that we have at the present time, five sectors, energy, transport, water management, residual matters, and uh, also the uh, territory, urban planning. And, the, and we launched energies also the efficiency, community efficiency, and also uh, sustainable housing and renovation of, uh, uh, of, uh, of buildings for the culture and sports. Uh, so there were 60 some programs that we, we felt we were uh, stretched to the limit. So we wanted to concentrate our actions on certain, certain themes, more specific sectors, under the umbrella of two of the carbo of net zero so to support uh, the municipalities in the fight against climate change and this process of change we are we are at the outset at the at the starting block at the, in january the actual programs are all still available if you have requests uh, comments uh, don't worry this is remains but uh, at the beginning of the year next year we're going to launch our new programs what we offer today is funding subsidies for the first uh, stages the first uh, two that we heard about today they benefited from the subsidies so we're studies up to 50% of the admissible cost to a maximum of 175,000. And for the pilot project, it will depend on the number of them between 50 and 80% of admissible cost for a maximum of half a million. So these are the numbers that are valid actually, but that will change. We will remain, keep the same philosophy for subsidies as far as the studies and 
pilot projects, uh, but what we want to improve in the new in, in the new programs is that the smaller municipalities with 10,000 or less citizens will uh, be admissible for greater funding. So right now it's for it's for larger uh, agglomerations of citizens, but now we will give more opportunities for the capital projects. Uh, this is coherent with our with our program. We can cover up to 80% of the admissible cost with the c combining subsidies and loan and with a preferential. So they come up to a maximum of $10 million. So it gives additional tools to allow to go through the different s stages of the process, the, uh, new sectors of interest. Uh, as I said earlier, if you you don't you won't find this info on our on our site you are privileged you have the scoop so what the new series of programs we will concentrate on everything that's municipal uh, sustainable developments uh, this is really a, a, one of our priorities how to reduce the energy demands and the ghgs and also as far as the electrification of transports, uh, the, to once again, to s target the reduction of GHGs, electrification of transports, and, and we're going to move into two sectors that were not priorities in the past, but uh, right now it will become a central theme for our funds. So community ener energy systems, in, like in Kansiak, and transformation of organic uh, waste and energy. This will be the studies and capital project. There won't be a pilot projects per se because we're going to create another categories. The cohorts to, to target the uh, questions that are linked with innovation. We want to support the municipalities by creating sharing communities of knowledge with the systems of procurement and the food waste and the integrated the systems and the circular systems of uh, food procurement and integrated planning of the use of the territory. And this will be the everything that uh, is not within these four large categories, uh, if we integrate the co-ops, uh, if you have interesting ideas, we will continue to support them through these uh, sectors. So I don't wait to take too much of your time, but I'd like to say, uh, apart from the, these uh, changes, in 2024, there was, will be a new program in uh, adaptation to climate change, $530 million is the envelope to, to fund the, in the municipalities within the countries. We're talking about 1,400 projects, mostly interesting. And also I'd like to let you know, I work with the Quebec communities. I'm, I have more knowledge, but I, I know there are a lot of people throughout the country in the call in the Quebec, there's a, yeah, the municipalities will have a, a adaptation plan to climate change. So in the first part, it will be able, this will be able to fund this first uh, step. So there will be also subsidies and co combination of subsidies and loans for project pilot projects or also for capital projects. But this will be tackle more specifically climate change. So this is the process of, the, of uh, to request. So I invite you to call me. That's my work. My work is to support you through this process. So you've got general info. I'll also add the link if you want to make an appointment. Do not hesitate. Uh, you don't need to have some pinpointed a project from A to Z. Even if it's uh, still fuzzy, don't hesitate. Please communicate with me.